deplorable, despicable human being yeah. that yeah. occupies the White House should not be there. We, they say, Maxine, please don't say impeachment anymore. <laughs> and when they say that, I say impeachment, impeachment, <laughs> impeachment. <laughs> Well, just last year, Democratic leaders told us that impeachment was not on the agenda. Nobody believed them. Now, impeachment might be the only thing that can hold together their fractured, outraged party. Congressman Jerry Nadler of New York concedes impeachment is coming, even though evidence to support it has not yet been found, but will be. Do you think the president obstructed justice? Yes, I do. If that's the case, then is the decision not to pursue impeachment right now simply political, if you believe he obstructed justice? No, uh, we have to. We have to. We have to do the investigations and get all this. We, we do not now have uh, uh, the evidence all, all sorted out and everything to to do an, to, to to do an impeachment. Before you impeach somebody, you have to persuade the American public that it ought to, to happen. Some Democrats, though, are warning that an impeachment trial could damage the Democratic Party, and that's bad because the Democratic Party is the most important thing, always. David Axelrod warned on Twitter that a recent wave of more than 80 Democratic subpoenas, quote, too easily plays into the witch hunt meme. Longtime Clinton family aide Greg Hale tweeted this, quote, please don't do it. Please don't impeach him. It won't help us win in 2020. He deserves it. I believe that. But what's the best long-term play for the country, question mark? Dana Perino hosts the Daily Briefing, of course, one of our favorite people in the building. She joins us tonight. So, to, double question. Okay. Will the president be impeached by Democrats, and will, if that happens, that trial hurt the Democratic Party? Well, I, I think if they do it, of course, yes, I think they all know that it's going to hurt the Democratic Party. That's why you see people like David Axelrod and Greg Hale, and there's others saying, right. whoa, 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 like, don't, they got to tap the brakes. But... I think what's happening now, Tucker, there's three types of Democrats. You have, first, you have people like uh, Chairman Nadler. He is in a very safe district. He is an old bull of the Congress. He's been chomping at the bit to have the gavel back. And he pays no political price in his district right. because he's going to win again. And also, he has a way to keep the base happy. Then you've got a second group, which are the freshmen. They won in very tough districts, right? They're in 40 seats. Most of those were in Republican held seat districts that are, uh, could easily be switched back in 2020 to Republicans because that's how swing districts work. And they don't want to talk about this. They want to show that they can govern on important issues like infrastructure, health care, et cetera. And the third group are your presidential candidates. And they have to keep the base happy enough, talking impeachment, but they also have to look long term to a general election where impeachment doesn't work. And just last week, Axios said that all of the candidates that go to Iowa right now, they're not talking about Trump. They're not talking about Mueller. They're not talking about Russia. They don't talk impeachment. They don't want to talk about it. So they're in a little bit of a box because the base wants it. The old guard knows that it shouldn't happen. But sometimes it's inevitable that you have people like Jerry Nadler who say, I've got the gavel. I'm going to use it. I, I wonder if insurgents like Ocasio-Cortez could do to the Democrats what Trump did to the Republicans, which is just outflank them and use social media to, to do it, demand that they live up to their promises, which in effect are to an impeach Trump. They call him a criminal. How can you not impeach him? I mean, could they force the party to do it? Well, sure. Like, they could get mad at the establishment, right? right they could exactly. say, what are you afraid of? Like, why can't you do this? And they'll be like, well, uh, you know what? You have to stay in power. We have to be able to you know, do this correctly. But here's the other thing is that President Trump does better when he has a foil, when he has someone to go up against. Right. And the House Democrats are now that foil. It's not just Pelosi, right? He seems to actually kind of get along and even respect Nancy Pelosi. Um, but the others, like the left, now he has something to push back against. So, again, you get to 2020, an election, not a midterm, it's not a referendum on the president. It's a choice between two people. And just like what happened with Bill Clinton in 1998, right, um, his popularity went up when the Republicans tried to impeach him. Right. And well, did Republicans him. actually lost seats right. in that midterm, which right. is, I think it's only happened twice in, you know, 100 years. And that was, that was definitely one of them. So finally, quick, do, do you think it's possible that the leaders of the Democratic Party, Pelosi, for example, keep this contained? I, I think it'll be very difficult. And I think if you look at the debate that the House Democrats are having just right now about whether to have a resolution on the floor to condemn anti-Semitism, right. like they're, they're, they can't even do that, right? So <laughs> who is really the leader of the Democratic Party right now? 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to laugh. It's just the, I know the you're laughing at always, me. Calling everyone else immoral can't pass a resolution against anti-Semitism. It's, it's, okay. it's a really hard. It's a tough choice. It tells you a lot. Dana Prino, it is never tough to talk to you. It's always a pleasure. Love Thank seeing you. Very you. Much. Thanks, Tucker. Thank you.